And as always, my timing is brilliant. It's time to talk to two of our federal politicians now. Uh, David Smith, the Labor member for Bean, joins us. David, good morning. Morning, Stephen. And uh, representing the government uh, is uh, Angus Taylor, the uh, member for Hume and Minister for Energy Emissions and Reduction. Angus, good morning. G'day, Stephen. Uh, before I start, David, if I could just pass on our sincerest condolences to you on behalf of the team here at 2CC on the passing of your dad, and our thoughts and prayers are with you. So uh, I hope uh, you're coping at this time, um, a terrible time for any family, but uh, our thoughts are with you, mate. Uh, look, thanks, Stephen. That's, that's really, really appreciated. Angus, uh, floods are devastating large parts of New South Wales at the moment. Um, look, ultimately, there's nothing... Uh, this is not the government's fault, but response is always going to be levelled at uh, state and federal governments. Uh, are we going to... Are we assured that the Prime Minister's not going to say something silly like, I don't hold the hose again? Well, obviously, my thoughts go to those people who are suffering from the floods, and, and I'm seeing it in my own electric Moragamba Dam in the north, obviously, flooding, and, and I had to come through floodwaters to get to Parliament yesterday, Stephen. So it's a tough time for a lot of people, and uh, uh, and I know they're really feeling it. Look, we've had uh, many local government areas declared disaster areas. Uh, the funding is already in place and flowing. Um, that support will be there as required. The ADF are ready to go. So all of these things are in place. They need to be, um, you know, and uh, look, the, the best way to deal with these issues, as I saw through the bushfires, which were ravaged my electorate, was for federal government and state government to work together. That's exactly what we saw there, and it's what we'll see here as well. Do we need to take a more ma uh, more federal approach to water management, given some of the issues that we're seeing at the moment? I mean, the fact that uh, Warragamba Dam is clearly... Uh, its capacity is not uh, what it should be anymore, uh, particularly from a flood mitigation perspective, but also with all this water around, we still haven't got around to building any of these dams yet. Well, we are, actually. And Wangala Dam, for instance, at the other end of my electorate, uh, we're raising the wall. It'll carry significantly more water than it has in the past. Wangala Dam, the state government, has a proposal uh, to expand it. I think the debate around that will change uh, now with what we're seeing over the last few days. And we do need to. We do need to make sure we have appropriate water management. We'll work with state governments as we can. Ultimately, uh, it is work that has to be across the Federation, and we live in a Federation. That, that's the reality, Stephen, and uh, there's no way around that. But it is important these projects happen, and we're determined to make them happen. Dave, uh, you're, you've called uh, for um, better engagement on how to improve working conditions for staff at Parliament House. Some of these allegations that have come out recently, and I'm not talking about the serious criminal stuff, which should be dealt with by the police, but um, the, the, the culture at Parliament House is not a new phenomenon. I mean, this latest story that we saw pop up on the reality TV channel, this is stuff that people have known about for decades. Isn't it a bit opportunistic now to be uh, jumping up and down about it when people have remained silent for so many years? Stephen, so, so, I think... Um staff have actually been raising some of these issues at least for the last couple of years and there there's some pretty pretty simple practical changes that we could make which might start to make a bit of a a, a cultural difference um uh we know that there are problems with uh, collective bargaining right across the country and, and some of those problems are here uh in this workplace Stephen. um the uh staff voted down the uh collective agreement uh just late last year and one of the reasons why they did that is that there were particular changes that they wanted to see, which were actually aimed at actually uh, addressing some of the some of these issues around the challenges we have with workplace culture at Parliament House. So what do we actually do about it? Because uh, as I, I discussed with Janet Albrookson, who came up with some very very uh, common sense. Uh, suggestions that, that were suggestions that will all be ignored, of course. But one of the things she pointed out is we're effectively talking about 217 small businesses, plus obviously the Commonwealth employees that are operating in Parliament House. And ultimately, it has to be that to a certain extent. How do we address that? Uh, look, it, it's, a, it's a good point, and uh, we don't all come with the same experience. So, whilst many of us have uh, managed staff and run businesses before. Quite, quite a few haven't, but uh, I guess one of the one of the simple ways, uh, Stephen, would be to um, ensure that there's a, a reasonable exit path to staff. Because at the moment, um, you, know, you, you don't you don't return to the public service or something like that if you uh, lose your job here at Parliament House. The the power's all pretty much one way, and so we need to at least provide uh, some sort of uh, 
career security to staff who actually make pretty big sacrifices to join us uh, in, our, in our offices, but also understand that the environment is not the same as, as, as a regular uh, work, workplace, uh, that um, the work is going to be intense for periods of time. But that's, that's not an excuse for a lot of the behaviour that we've been saying. No, and that, that's certainly right. But when you talk about job security, I mean, the same could be said for MPs. I mean, anybody that gets a job there or goes through the process generally has political aspirations. Uh, isn't it just the nature of the beast that um, you're at the mercy of the Australian people, effectively? Look, it's certainly part of the contract, but we actually get uh, remunerated significantly better than uh, our staff do. And in fact, Stephen, you know, one of my one of one of my bugbears is is that uh, the electorate staff here, for the work that they do, in my view, is that they actually get. Uh, paid less than what their equivalents would in the uh, broader public service. I think that's a fair call. Uh, Parliament has uh, almost uh, unilaterally backed a Royal Commission into veteran suicide. Angus, why is the Prime Minister dragging his feet on this? Well, we haven't been dragging our feet, but look, it, it's an enormously important issue. There's no doubt about that. Uh, we, we heard a very passionate speech from a number of people, including Phil Thompson, a, a brilliant speech yesterday about this issue. It's one I care about personally a great deal. For the last three years, I've led Polypedal and we've supported Soldier On, of course, which focuses on exactly this issue. And, and our solution has been to put a permanent statutory commissioner in place to deal with the issue. Now, we're hearing strong pleas that alongside that, there should be a Royal Commission. We're listening to those, uh, to, to those points of view um, and we're working our way through it. But there's no question the issue needs to be dealt with. And, and about that, I feel very passionately, and I know many of my parliamentary colleagues across the aisle uh, feel the same way. Uh, and we, whether it's through statutory commissioner and royal commission, uh, as I say, this is something we're, we're considering now. When are we likely to see terms of reference? Well, as I say, um, we're considering this now, so I'm not going to jump the, the jump the gun on this one. But what I would say is there's legislation in the Parliament establishing a permanent statutory commissioner with the power of a royal commission. Uh, and that, to me, seems like a pretty good uh, step forward. Let's get that done as well. I mean, this is, you know, we can't wait around on this. One of the great challenges of royal commissions is they take a long time. Um, and, you know, there's been many complaints about the Banking Royal Commission that it took a long time and, in the end... Uh, it, it was it was hard to get the reform that was required, and that's always the challenge with these things. We've got to get on with it regardless, no matter what uh, the ultimate outcome of this particular issue. We do need to get on with dealing with the issue, and I'm determined to, to work to make sure that happens. Uh, one last thing before you go, Angus. You've uh, visited the Snowy Mountains uh, to commission the first uh, tunnel boring machine uh, for Snowy 2.0, and uh, a bit of a personal connection for you. Yeah, it is. Look, and, uh, this was on Friday, the tunnel boring machine, 125 metres long. It's a huge drill, 2,300 tonnes. I've never seen anything like it, um, which will bore through the mountain and, and build this massive battery and, and storage of energy for us, for our, for our system. Um, for, for me personally, there was, there was a big connection here, which is that my grandfather was... Uh, led the, the scheme through the construction period right until the early 70s. And my, uh, my grandmother, who was a very, very strong woman, uh, working with him through that, uh, the, the drill, the tunnel boring machine was named after her, which is a great honour to my family. And uh, we feel very privileged to, to have that. She opened the, the first of the big tunnels at Guthaga back many, many, many years ago. Um, she was a very strong woman. Uh, a force to be reckoned with, and I can tell you, this tunnel boring machine is a force to be reckoned with too. And a nice bit of history there. Angus, good to talk to you this morning. We'll catch up again next time. Thanks. And Dave Smith, thank you for your time as well. Thanks, Stephen, and thanks for the condolences again. All the best. David Smith, Labor member for Bean, and Angus Taylor, the member for Hume, representing the Liberal Party. 18